Are we going? We're up and about. Oh, have a look at you. You know when we're talking about you getting a new look? Yeah. I was talking about Urban Cool. Mm-hmm. You've gone Urban Chic on me. <laughs> look at you. You're looking a million dollars. Just a little bit. Oh, I'm growing, I'm you're growing. making an effort, sir, and that is great to see. I'm growing the beard. Yeah, I don't mind It takes me a beard. long time to grow the beard. Is it itchy? Uh, past the itchy stage now. Oh. Hey, um, what does that mean? Hang on. Uh, what does that mean? Well, you know, you get the stubbly stage. It's okay, but when it gets a bit longer, it's actually the itch goes. Oh. Yeah, it's a middle. It's kind of a little mid zone. It's, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, you grow a bit, third good. man. You've got you got a little bit happening. Oh, no, I've always got a little bit. Not, ginger not a, too. I'm, you got well, the ginger. Well, I'm a ranger, so yeah. <laughs> you look good. Hey, we have to thank the ENS Trading Clearance Centre, then in on the road, Clayton. Some of the bargains people are getting in contact with us about. It is ridiculous. Make sure you go down there if you're looking for stuff. Just go to Ikea. In fact, don't go to Ikea. <laughs> Look at Ikea and go left because opposite Ikea, it's that's opposite. where we are. That's where we are. <laughs> hey, can I just have a chat to you about last week when we walked out of E-Clat, uh, Nick Maxwell? When we walked out of E-Clat. e Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a summary term. <laughs> so, <laughs> Leave that in, Dan. <laughs> go oh, on, it's E-Clat. It's E-Clat. So yeah. when we walked out of E-Clat, e- E-Clat for summary people, but yeah, that's E-Clat. Right. That's right, that's right. We went up and had a look at Paul Tubman's uh, house at the top. It's a lovely house. It's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful, gorgeous house. And got a wonderful golf simulator in there. That's right. Which was great. And we met his wife, Jo, who's a lovely, lovely person. Jo's a ripper. And as we're walking out, we said, oh, Mark can give you some lessons. And she looked at She looked at (laughs) You were there. You were there. (laughs) What are you laughing at? You were there. She goes. so good. She goes, okay, why do you play golf? (laughs) (laughs) Now... I don't want to make you feel like crap. Why does this make you happy? No, Look at but, you both. Why does it make you both so happy? But Paul Tubman, myself, yeah. and third man yeah. over here, <laughs> I, don't think we're, the... I don't think we've ever laughed harder in all our life. You haven't. They've forgotten you. You have been forgotten on a whim. Well, that, you, you he, he used can't make, talk. Paul used, Tud- he used to be tall, Paul Tudman. You used to be David Schwartz. No, no, I'm still the ox. You walk in. <laughs> you used to be able to walk into Carousel or the Motel. I know. And everybody would command. You would command respect. Everyone would give you respect. Now, Joe, who was going to get a lesson off you on a golf simulator, yeah, yeah. she had. She asked me three times. Does he really play golf? Yeah, he yeah. doesn't look like a golfer. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Can I tell you this? <laughs> that really hurt. I was in the car on the way home and I was shaking my head. <laughs> Be all right. I was shaking my head going, what happened? You know who else laughed too? Tuddy funny. laughed. Tuddy <laughs> thought it was he, – he laughed too much. Yeah. And then I had to say 1995 British Open. She goes, 1995. 99. Oh, was it? Yes. So she so would have gone back and looked. She would have gone back and looked. Even you forgot. Actually, talk about, talk yeah. about the British Open. Uh, yeah. Now, I was just looking at your wrist. Yeah, the big powerful python wrists I've got from oh, playing golf. Oh, massive, massive, they are huge. Yeah, yeah, you look like you look like Popeye. <laughs> um, why do you? You're a right hander. That's right. Why are you wearing your watch on your right hand? Because normal people, normal folk, like normal folk wear it on their left. I've got two answers for this stupid question because it comes it, up all hang, the time. Hang on a minute. This is not a stupid question. This is a stupid question. Well, who said in the first place that you have to wear your watch on your left hand? There's no rule. You can wear your watch anywhere you want. You can okay, put it on but, your ankle if you like. Okay, but if you're there are ri- no laws. If you're writing your hand, yeah. writing, you can't look at your watch at the same time. So what you do, you do that, <laughs> and you look at your left. <laughs> if you see, that's why they do it. I didn't think that was the case. No, but no, but normally you're carrying stuff with your left hand, uh, with your right hand, because it's your dominant hand. Yeah. So you need your watch. Oh, hang on. Have a, I need. I've got to be there in five. No, no I've got four minutes. <laughs> you can have a look. <laughs> well, you got it on your left. <laughs> what a load of crap! I've never heard so much crap. So in my why life. are you wearing it on the right? Well, because I've, I've, I don't have any jewellery really, and when I got a wedding ring, when I got the wedding ring, yep. I didn't like the look. Of the watch and the wedding well, ring. Imbalanced. It was imbalanced. That's oh. right. So I'm just trying to balance it up. That's that's answer number one. Answer number two. Answer number two is, well, I play golf and when I wear my watch in my right hand, I get better timing. Don't tell me you we, tell your kids that. I tell anyone anyone that at a golf day. That's like bird pillows for your it, chewy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that is the biggest load of crap. At, at a golf day, whenever I'm doing a golf day, 
I, it's incredible, but I probably get asked two or three times, why have you got your watch on your right hand? Oh, and at the timing. golf day, I say, time the ball better with my... Now, while we're talking about so, watches and the British Open, there is a story... Don't make me tell this story. There is a story that our listeners probably haven't heard before. I don't like telling this story and I don't want to. Well, I'm I, being serious. Well, I think, third man, do you think you'd like to hear a story about, a famous story about a watch and an effort that Marco did... To get that watch was unbelievable. Well, it would be rude not to now that you've teased us like that. No, because this story hurt me a lot. You, right. know, you know that watch was in the top drawer of my office, our office, for about 12 months it hurt me. It broke my heart, this this story. We'll talk about the wedding because you wore it to your wedding. <laughs> yeah. I remember. You were very, very proud. Mate, tell tell us a story about your Louis Vuitton watch, please. It's worth It's worth telling because... It's, it's, I'll, only if I can go right back to the start. No, this is therapy. If I can tell the start... This is therapy. I'm listening. I'm okay. Fraser Crane. Okay. Marco, I'm listening. I don't mind this, actually. I'm listening. <laughs> right, eh? So when I, was, uh, when I first started playing golf, about two or three years in, I was playing well. I had stacks of cash. Oh, you were good. I had so much cash I didn't know what to do with, right? Stacks. Anyway, when they paired me with people who could play... All right. So when I got to see Colin Montgomery play, when I got to see uh, Allenby, because he was one of the best ball strikers the world's ever seen, uh, Appleby, all these guys who could really play, Norman, they hit the ball so much better than me, it wasn't funny. But I had an elite short game. Unbelievable. Off the charts, I would have, any, anybody, I would have taken them on short game and putting. I would have Especially just, out of the sand. Out of the sand. Untouchable. Untouchable. In fact, it wouldn't even be con- – I'd have to play left-handed. That's right. You'd, put, you'd almost put the watch back on the other hand. That's right. To even things up. So at the end of 1993, I went to my golf coach, Dale Lynch, very famous golf coach. Mm-hmm. He coached uh, 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 Jeff Ogilvie to his US Open Championship. I was his first guy. I was the first one, really. Anyway, I said, Dale, if we can change my swing – and lots of people were – Faldo changed his oh, swing, Nick Price winner. changed his swing, if, and, and they, they went on to be superstars. I said, mate, if we could change my swing and I can start hitting the ball 30 40% better, I'm going to be one of the best players in the world. Mm. If not and, the and best. And he goes, that's right. That's actually correct. I said, well, you know, I've got 300 grand in the bank. I can do whatever you like. Let, let's, let's take some time out and do this. He goes, let's do it. So that was in no. May... 1993, and I'm just getting the hang of those swing changes today. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's right. taking a while to get there. <laughs> I'm just getting the hang of it now. That's all right. Anyway, my bank balance just we disappeared, know? not overnight, but pretty close because what you do as a golfer, I didn't want to start leaving, living like a pleb. No. Right? I loved my caddy. a really good one. I was paying him good cash to be a good caddy. Checkers. Cheggers, Tommy, Con, all of them. Drew, all, all my caddies were paid well and they were with me, which was great. I loved it. I, I actually really loved having a caddy. Mm. I told you about that. I yeah. got the fight with Cheggers because I used to introduce yeah. him as my caddy. Yeah, he beat you up over it. Anyway, you know? he did beat me up over it. Thanks for bringing that up. What a great – this is a long <laughs> therapy session right here. We've got Joe Tatham on the phone too. Mark, <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> Thank you, Ox. I'm listening. You're a good man. Now that you've gone urban <laughs> cheek, I can see a general tra- change in who you are. Anyway, it's so about three years later. Instead of having 300000 in the bank, I owe my two biggest sponsors – Mr. Mastercard and Mr. Visa. <laughs> I owe them fifty thousand dollars. Ouch! Fifty grand. And back in those days, uh, the interest rates weren't four point one percent like they are now. Seven eight, about. Eight. They were enormous. So the credit mm. card was enormous as well. And I, I was gone. I was gone. I struggled and struggled and struggled, but nothing happened in in the middle of nineteen ninety nine. So this is six years later, I was struggling, struggle town. Little bits and pieces, you know, popped up. It, it had broken my heart. And I went to my dad and I said, hey, Dad, I'm done. And he was, you know, my, he was kind of my biggest critic and my biggest supporter at the same time. If there's such a thing, I said, mate, I'm done. He goes, you can't. He goes, I saw how hard you worked. I saw what you've done. You're so close. Oh, believe me, I wasn't close. You're so close. <sighs> yeah, I don't want you to stop. And he went, 
to his bedroom. He came back out and he had a cheque for 5000 bucks, right? And I took that cheque. Well done. I took it. <laughs> that was a shit thing to do, you idiot. <laughs> no, it was well done. It was well done by Kept him. Kept your career going. No, it was well, well done by him. That's a great thing from a dad. Yeah. Anyway. Considering he had no cash. The next tournament was the West Australian Open. So I start practising like I've never practised before, you know, rejuvenated. I can't let my dad down, right? I can't let him down. I, I get over there and uh, we're playing Lake Karen up. Good course. It's uh, Perth's version of Royal Melbourne. You know, it's their best course it's over a ripper. there. Uh, later that year, they were going to have the Johnny Walker Classic there. So what they did is they really toughened it up and they put the tees back a million miles and they changed some stuff. And we got there and they were, they were laughing, you know, because no one's going to rip this course apart. And when you get the player pack, you know, you go and register and you get a player pack and there was this little leaflet that said anyone can shoot the course record this week gets this Louis Vuitton watch. I actually at the time didn't even know what Louis Vuitton was. No. In 1999. Would have thought it was handbags or something. I didn't know. I didn't. No. Louis Vuitton watch, I couldn't care less, yeah. right? Anyway, first round I shoot 72. Second round I shoot 73. Third round I shoot 72. And Awful. Third man, that is shit. That you are a shit. That'd be good shit. for you. What was, uh, that'd, be, that'd be great for me. You <laughs> that'd are, be great for you. If you're doing that sort of stuff, you're a shit player. Where did that put you on the leaderboard? Uh, I was coming eighth. I was in the third last group, so okay. I, I wasn't far off the lead. Yeah, it was a the tough was track. It was a tough track. That's right. I was one over par. I think Brad King was four on the par. It was toughened up. So the yeah. par was par for the course was 71. 72. 72. 72. 72. So 72, 73, 72. I'm one over par, and I'm finished. Five I'm off not, the lead. I'm, no, I'm not. And and the reason that is is because. You've got to shoot 66s and 67s and 68s and your bad day is kind of going to be a 71. That's your bad day. And I was so far off that. I was just a million miles away. I couldn't hit the ball properly. I was done. Did your caddy know that that was the end? Well, I went inside my car and I came out and I looked at him and he goes, what's wrong? And I said, man, I'm done. I said, that's, you know, I'm going nowhere. And he looked up at me, he was this little bloke, and he looked up at me and goes, well... Why don't we go out and get drunk? <laughs> and I'm at wit's end, right? I'm at, I'm at wit's end. No, this, this game has broken my heart. I'm done. I said, yeah, it's a fucking great idea. Let's go out and let's get drunk. <laughs> right? And Pin I'm, the ears back. Oh, mate. <laughs> yeah. oh, it was... Shandy's all round. It was one of those nights. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those nights. There were illusion shakers and, <laughs> oh. and you know, Kalura milks. Everything. You know, Southern it. Comfort Kalura, and Coke. Kalura <laughs> milk. Four o'clock in the oh. morning. It was four o'clock in the morning, and I'm out dancing with Erna, who is used to be my caddy's mum. She's <laughs> right. Dance away. Well done. <laughs> with her at the nightclub. Anyway, my tea time the next day was all about 11 o'clock. It was, right, it was before noon. And I go, oh, well, come on, I've got to go. Come on, let's get going. So we turn up. How hungover? Oh, level five. <laughs> level, level five. Level five. level five. Did you have vomit hung. on you? No, my caddy did. Oh, did he? My caddy did. And, and he got... <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he turned up and he was wearing the same stuff he was wearing the night before oh, at the no. nightclub, right? No, so he had no. his pointy shoes on. He had his, you know, those old cowboy kind of button-up <laughs> yeah, long sleeve yeah, shirts yeah, that bloody the oh, sheriff used to wear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had one of those on. And, and like you do in golf... You always save your number one outfit for the last day. You want to look your best. So I had my cream pants and this oh, white, no. beautiful shirt. Oh, no. My, you Disaster. Know, just, just everything. Everything. Anyway, it, it rained a little bit overnight. It got to the first. I'm just looking. I just, I just don't even want to take a swing on the driving range just to warm up. But I thought I had to. And I took a swing with the wedge and I hit it so fat and then all this mud came up and now I'm just covered. <laughs> I'm just covered in mud from head, literally head to toe. And, and and you know what I did, which is stupid? I wiped some mud off my T-shirt, off my off my golf shirt, and because it was mud, it's made me stripes. <laughs> right? I've got stripes now on my shirt. <laughs> we get to the first hole, and the first hole, Lake Karen up, it's a little hole. It's a three iron, yeah, it's 272 metres. I've just got the card out here. And we're going we're gonna to right. flick this card onto our socials because this, is, it, this story is 100% fact. So the first hole, it's a three iron Wedge. and a 60 metre flick. Yep. That's it. 
I hit my three iron so fat I had 160 metres. <laughs> <laughs> right. So fat. It was one of those days where I'm looking at the ball, there's three balls, you know, all, the, all, the, all those stories. I get over my eight iron and I've hit it thin and it's got onto the green. And I'm looking at my caddy and I'm this, we're looking at each other going, what, is, what are you going to shoot today? You know, this is this is this is going to be. This funny. is six or seven over. This is funny. <clears throat> yep. This is going to be funny. I get over to thirty footer and I go, and it goes straight in that fucking hole. Cluck. I look at him. One under. And, and he he's just he just can't believe what's just happened, and I'm just smiling because it's it's a flick, right? It's an absolute. And flick. you're still drunk. Drunk, <laughs> mate. I had bourbon and coke dripping off my nose. They don't, don't, don't <laughs> sweat. They don't breath those players, do they? No. <clears throat> no. You, must have, you must have reeked of alcohol. It was disgusting, Dan. Who are you no. playing with? Can you remember? No, I haven't got a clue. No. That, 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 oh, well, hang on, I'll have a look at the card. Who's, who's he, what does that look like? Who signed that? I wouldn't even have a clue. Uh, I Cooper. Does that look like a Cooper? Yeah, it does. That's a Cooper. Coops. I was playing with Coops. Good bloke. It is a Coops. It's a good signature too. Yeah. Well, anyway. Coops. So Cooper's, what was his name? Kid from South Australia. Anyway, we get an exile and I've made a birdie and I'm thinking, all right, well, maybe it's not going to be all that bad. I hit it so far right off the second. Right? Yeah. <laughs> These trees. <laughs> it's just nowhere. I'm on my knees. I chip it out. I've got a three iron in or something. I hit the three iron in the front trap, and yeah, the day's over. Yep. Unless, of course, you are the greatest bunker player the the world. this world has ever seen. Don't tell me you put it in. I knocked a straight nine. Oh, no. Made a four. Four. <laughs> Next hole's a par five. I managed to get it within wedge range for after two shots. I hit a wedge the six foot and I hold the six foot. I'm two Bang. under after three. Bang. The next hole's a 390 metre killer hole. Killer hole. I'd stuffed it all week. Like a, It's a hard hole. It's a really difficult one. Made a four somehow. The next is a 163 metre par three. Don't tell me. The pin is at the back. And oh, it's a dangerous two pin. two-tiered green. And I hit it again, fat, lucky just to get over the front trap and I've got a 90-footer. Don't you dare. That 90-footer never looked like Mr. Oh, oh, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. A big kill. I went in. It's gone in. I'm three under after five. Uh, the next time. So we're going to go through every hole? No, no. Oh, okay. no, no I promise you. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to have to do an extended well, special. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Next time is the number one hole in the course. Oh, 408 tough. metres straight up a hill. Drive down the middle, three on it on the front edge to 15 feet, and I knock that 15 oh, foot in. Oh, no. I look over in my caddy. You're four under. I'm four under through six. I can't see my caddy. He's overthrowing up by a tree behind <laughs> the six hole. But I'm telling you, he's throwing up. He's gone through the crowd. Right? Oh, that's funny. He's gone through this little crowd. We would have only been 15 people following. God, know? that's good. And he's throwing up. Who was your caddy at this time? His name was Trevor Dublin. Right, okay. All right, so it was Drew Dublin's dad, and he was doing me a favour. Drew was working at that stage. Drew used to be my caddy. And I was it's his wife, Erna, I was dancing with Erna Dublin at 4 o'clock in the morning at oh, o'clock. Anyway, next time's a par five, should be a birdie. I don't. I'm in the bunker for three <laughs> shots, but of course I hit a bunker shot to about six inches. I could have done that. I could, yeah. have, I could, could have actually been Shut on. your eyes. I could have been on a, some kind of heroin body and I still would have hit it to yeah. six inches out of a trap. Yeah. That, that's the sort of bunker player I was. Next hole is a 200 metre par three and there is a scoreboard right next to the tee and I'm four under. I look up, I'm one back. I one You're back. one off the lead. I'm one back Bradley Brad Hughes King. will be shaking Brad in his King. boots. I'm oh, one Brad back King. Brad King from Western Australia. One back. Anyway, I get on the par three. I hit a three iron again, just 200 metres, right onto the front of the green. And again. You didn't. That 40 footer. Look at the card, dude. Oh, it was that a two. That 40 footer went straight in the. Didn't look like missing at any stage. Oh, my goodness. At any stage. Now, I'm starting to. I'm starting to wake up now. I'm starting to feel like, hang starting on. Starting to sober up. I'm, yeah, well, yeah, that's what I meant. Right? So I'm, 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 I'm going okay. I'm yeah, going, absolutely. I'm, I'm going You're five okay. under through That's eight. right. That's right. Get on the ninth tee. My oh. caddy comes up to me and goes, don't hit the driver. And with throw up all over his shirt, he handed me the two iron. Oh, what a man. All right. What a man for the moment. The two iron, I, I half top it. Oh, no. Not like you'd top it, Dan. Oh, <laughs> right. Wow. Oh, so it still went 200. It still went okay, yeah. all right, but it was a really thin shot and it jarred my yeah. hands a little bit. Yeah. I get up and it's up to the clubhouse. Now, the word's out. 
There's a round game. There's a kid. There's a kid on fire. There's a kid on fire. There's a, there's a drunk kid on fire. <laughs> <laughs> there's a kid on fire and I can see the crowd up there. Oh. And for the first time, I felt a little bit nervous. No way. I got over the ball, hit a 9-9 and went straight at the pin. Oh, yeah. It's a blind. You can't see the, you can't see the dance floor. Yeah. But I heard some claps. Oh, yes. Not enough claps to go, wow, that's stiff, but some genuine claps. I get up there and it's six foot past the hole, but I've got the quickest oh, the slider. On the golf course, a quick the, you couldn't have had a quicker putt. Just a defensive, do yep. not try and hold this because yep. you'll be off the front of the green sort of putt. So I get over it after Coops is what, doing whatever the hell he's doing. He's just in awe at this oh, stage yeah, watching he, what I'm accomplishing. He'd be feeding you grapes. Uh, I get over this putt and I can remember thinking to myself, where the fuck is this going to go? Because, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm looking down, I'm starting to get the shakes a little bit, I'm a little bit nervous. I've just touched it. Yeah, good. And I'm watching it. It's, it's wobbling. Wobble, 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 wobble straight into oh, the no. hole. I've just shot 30 on the front nine. The hardest course Karen on the planet. Up. That's It's unthirtyable. Yeah, it's six under. toughened up. I'm six under. And I take this 400-strong crowd to the 10th team. <laughs> <laughs> because now. Now. Now it's on. Now it's performance time. Now it is on and I am leading the Western Australian oh, no. Open. Oh, no. No. I'm, I'm leading it. You're the man. I'm going to win. All right. Dad's 5,000. The whole <laughs> lot, right? And what was the purse? About 30 odd thousand? Oh, 40 I think thousand? It, was, it was about 25 at first. Yeah. Time, something like that. Lovely. All right. So it was enough. It was Done. enough. It was enough to, you know, keep me rolling. Get over the 10th tee. Straight downhill, this whole driver. Another little toppy sort of shot, which is fine when yeah. you're under pressure. I had a, a six iron to about uh, 20 feet. And I get over this 20 foot up. I can see Brad Price going down um, the ninth fairway. He was giving me the bird. Very unusual in the world of golf. Brad but King? Brad King. Brad King. No, the bird. Him giving oh, me the bird. Oh, he was, <laughs> he, he was giving you. me the bird. Oh, thank right? you very much. Because I've just gone in front of him. Oh. Right. So he's going You're back. joking. No. You don't do that in golf. That's Colin Montgomery. He's a good bloke. Behaviour. He's, he's all right. He's all right. He's a good bloke. Anyway, I get over don't the 20 Don't tell me about the pipe. I get over this 20 footer. Don't tell me. And I'm starting to feel it. Oh, no. Belief. I'm starting to feel no, you're what's the man going now. on yeah, there. Yeah, and yeah. I'm just going to ride this all the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. I get over the 20 footer. It was the smoothest stroke I put on it for the day. It was a left to rider. It was down the hill. It was about six inches out to the left. And I promise you, that putt was in before I hit it. It was in. Oh. <laughs> Seven under through ten. Oh, no. Leading by two. Oh, no. I'm on my way to shooting a 59. It was 59 watch. Written all over it. And I am going to change my life. Yes. <laughs> and how's this? The next hole, the next hole is a par five, the shortest par five on the golf course. So your birdie does as well. It's a three iron and a six iron. Eagle. So I'm walking to the next tee thinking, with my three wood, I'm walking to the next tee going... I'm going to smoke this three wood right down the middle. I'm going to smoke a three iron, a six iron to the middle of the green. And, and it doesn't care where it is. I don't care where it is on the green. It doesn't matter. It's, well, going, I'll make in. The it's going to go in. And Four then, under. Then, then, then that make me nine under through 11. Yep. And I can basically do what I want from that point. You're going to be on sports tonight. You're going to be on sports tonight. First, I was going to shoot 59 in a tournament. That's for, right. Yep. That's Tim right. Webster pumping you up. That's right. Anyway, so I'm walking back to the 11th tee. And it's a little stony track. And normally, Trevor, my caddy, the guy wearing the pointy shoes and the cowboy shirt and s- throw up all over it, would walk up and he'd meet me up there because, you know, he's it's, it's, yeah. it's a bit older at that stage. He was trying to – I hear someone behind me, right? So I've really I've, – I've hit the putt and I'm out. I don't care what Cooper's doing back there. I'm no. going to next day. This is my tournament. <laughs> and I, I can hear these little little steps. I look back and there he is. I mean, what's he on? And he comes up to me and he looks up and he goes, you can win this. Oh, no. <laughs> no. He's put the mockers on. Trevor. What the fuck are you doing, Trev? What, what are you doing? Stay what, out of my business. What are you doing? This is a no-hitter. You know, when a pitcher's throwing a no-hitter, you don't talk to him. No. You don't say anything. You stay away. You, have you seen the pictures of, of, of the dugout? Yes. When, there's a pitcher up one end. With a little bit of ice on his on his shoulder. Yep. And then the whole team is cramped down the other because oh, they don't want to moz this bloke. You don't want to mush him. No. You can win this. So instead of thinking about smoking my three wood and then my six iron and then You're not thinking about, about winning wood, the tournament. 
I'm thinking about my winning speech. <laughs> oh, no. I'm thinking I'm going to thank Dad. Tears. I thank my coach. Because you hadn't won a tournament it's at the stage, It's taken a while to get their swing right, but we got there, Dale. You know, it's all yeah. chicken. Keeps finally gets there. I teed up my three wood. Snap hooked it into the left trees. <laughs> oh, no. Chipped it out. I ended up holding eight foot of a six. Oh. I scramble home. I just somehow par all these bloody holes away. Brad King shoots around on the back, pips me at the post. But I've shot this course record, right? And at the start of the week, they said, you got to get a Louis Vuitton watch. So at the presentations, I got my little check and I got my Louis Vuitton watch. Now, Dan, I love this watch <laughs> because what I did with that money all right. I ended up going to the British Open. I led the qualifying for the British Open in 1999 with Michael Campbell and Luke Donald, the little kid who just ha- helped captain the uh, Europeans to victory a few the weeks right ago. Cup, yeah, 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 right. Yeah. That's right. So he ended up, Luke Donald ended up going to be the number one player in the world. Uh, Michael Campbell ended up beating Tiger at the US Open. And I'm here doing a podcast with the Ox. Right? <laughs> 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 right. uh, but what happened, because I led the British Open qualifying, three radio stations wanted to talk to me about it. And that's how my radio career started. Uh, because after Triple M and then after 927, then... 3AW with uh, Ross Stevenson and, and Dean, Dean Banks, it was back then. And I had the hang of it. I had the hang of radio in three interviews. You're fine. I was flying. And that's how it started. All because of that tournament in WA. All because I went out and got blind. Well, yeah. <laughs> so there is that. Because, and shot the course record. And shot the course record. And got the most beautiful Louis right. Vuitton watch. Now, so I, that, that watch meant everything to me because it was a symbol of what can happen in life, if you take your opportunity. Yeah, and you did. I took it. You did. <laughs> I somehow, anyway, a few years later, I'm coaching away at the, the Elba Park driving range and I'm showing somebody how to hit a six iron or something and the, the, the band broke oh. of this watch. Which is uh, okay. Doesn't matter. Mate, it's a great watch. Louis Vuitton, Paris end of Colton Street. Yep, Ox, yep. Right? There's one there. I'll take it in there tomorrow and I'll get him fixed. So in I go. Can you fix this, mate? He goes, yeah, absolutely. Good to me. He goes, I'll call you when it's ready. Two weeks later, I get the phone call. Mate, come in and pick up your watch. Hey. Beauty. Here we go. And it was one of those watches, no batteries. It was human move. You, know? mm. you just had to move it. And it was, it was so good. I loved that watch and everything it represented. Mm. I walked into that Louis Vuitton shop and the bloke saw me. He bent down under the counter and he came up with this envelope. And on the envelope, I could see written on top. Not genuine. <laughs> oh, they gave me a fake no. fucking watch. They gave me a fake watch. Why <laughs> 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 did that make you so oh, happy? I don't know what, make, I don't what makes me happy because... Oh, my God. Because oh, I, my I, I know how much luck you had with that watch. Oh. I know how many you oh. cut from the herd of the carousel. Mate. I don't know how many from the motel. You've got your the Louis- you, you've got your baby photos with it. You've yeah. got your wedding photos yeah. with oh. it. Mate. <laughs> Not genuine. Not genuine. So they gave you a fake watch. Did Not you- genuine. I'm telling you, I didn't know the power of Louis Vuitton until I started wearing it to the boutique. Oh, yeah. Because you'd talk to it, you know, you, there'd be a girl over there twinkling away. You'd say, come over. <laughs> twinkling. <laughs> right? Oh, you'd say, come, come over here. And you'd talk to her and you'd, you'd show, you'd say, how do you, do you like Louis Vuitton? Do you like Louis Vuitton? Louis. The girls love oh, Louis Vuitton. Yeah, I didn't realise. No. It was, it, my watch had powers. Oh, I didn't understand. Yeah. Right? Not genuine. You know what you sound like then? You sounded like uh, your mate Brad the pilot rather than, <laughs> yeah. hey, I'm a pilot, my name's Brad. You're like, hey, I'm wearing a little bit of watch, my name's Mark. That's yeah. literally what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. And, and, uh, and you, broke, wore that on the, you wore that on the right hand as well, didn't you? Yeah, yep. Yep, I wore it. Yeah, I never, you, I never played with the golf, but I used to teach with it because you need to know when the lesson was going to finish. So I used that, to have it there because that was one of my pickup lines. If I saw a girl wearing a watch on her right <laughs> hand, I reckon you're left-handed. Ah, that's yeah, that's, that's you're in. That's a little, that's that's a little warm-up line. Yeah, that's nice. That's, that's nice. That is a very sad but very funny story. <laughs> yeah, that, it, it did like it, that. I was cut. Oh, I know. I was so, I tell you I how was was, so hurt. Because I, I, actually, I actually dropped it off to him. I actually dropped it off to Louis Vuitton for him. No, well, you, you actually, you said, no, I'm, I'll check this. This can't be right. No, that's right. Yeah. That's right. So he took, you took it to a watch bloke as well. Yeah, to, just to make sure that they weren't trying to stooge him. And <laughs> the bloke looked at me and goes, this is fake. <laughs> it, it's shit house inside. So it was, oh. yeah. Un- 
unbelievable. So the sponsors of the tournament yeah, did, did, did quite dodgy. Out of it. So they, they bought that in Barley for oh, yeah. 100 bucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, <laughs> break, not, not even 100 probably. <laughs> well, no, see, that's the deal. Nobody was ever going to break that course record because no. the course was actually too tough. What you had to do is you had to have an out-of-body experience yeah. brought on by bourbon and coke. <laughs> There's no other way to shoot a 66 at Lake Karen up back uh, in that day. But then just it's just, the, it's just to finish it because I know we're going to go to a break. To finish it, you know how the, I told you there was a Johnny Walker classic later that yep. year? Uh, Retief Goosen came and shot 62, 68, 62, 68. And that's what you got to do. If you, if you want to be any good. 72, 73, 72, even throwing the 66 is garbage. When the big boys come to town, you got to be a freak. Because you know I played in that Johnny Walker, Walker Classic. That's right. Who'd you play with? I played with you, Ernie Els yes. and Sergio Garcia. And one other. Steen <laughs> Tinning. Steen Tinning, that's that was right. My th- that was my threesome with them or yeah, well, well. my foursome. But, but those you, three... Now, the post office was a very famous nightclub. Yeah. Were you at the post office with Sergio? Yep, and I'll be honest, it was the first handball I'd ever received. Sergio Garcia had them on. He handballed one to you. Oh, he had did them on. Did he ever... know who you were? By the end of the night, he did. By the end of the night, at the start <laughs> of the day, he didn't give it rats. By the end of the night, we were best mates. And, in fact, if I rang Sergio today, <laughs> I reckon he might take my call. Unbelievable. Great story, Marco. Uh, yeah, that's, hey, a, that's hey, a ripper. We... And Marco? I'm listening. Okay, well, thank. I'm, I actually s- somehow feel better. That's the one. I'm not sure you're going to be feeling better next because oh. we, we've got a poll result about whether we should put oh. a picture of you getting the clinic treatment. Oh, no. We're going to yeah. find out what happened next. People unhappy. You're having a couple of beers with a couple of blokes? This is Ox and Marco. We'd love you to subscribe and rate us when you get a chance. Righto. Um, so hey, just on just on your watch and left-handed. Yeah. Do you reckon left-handed sportsmen or sports people? Yeah, they're unbelievable. They look good, don't they? Is that because we don't see enough of them? It's, I think we're just so used to seeing it come from the right side. Yeah. But yeah, they're, they're unbelievable. They're, because especially because Phil, Phil Mickelson looks good hitting a golf ball with the left. I reckon. No, see, that's what I, I reckon. I reckon he's all right. Always look crap in golf. No, I don't. I, who they was, never look who good. Was, who was a Canadian that won the... Um, Mike Weir had a great swing. Mike Weir had, had a great swing. Richard Green had a great swing. See? Not many others. Oh, but there's not many lefties out there. No. Nah. Nico Hearn had a, he had a repeated yeah, swing. he had a, a, re- he, it was very a repeatable repeated. swing. What about tennis? Now, they, now you're talking. They look magical. S- some left-handed tennis players look just... Magical. Amazing. Magi- Rafa, magical. Unbelievable. I'm amazed at these guys who can kick... Beautifully well in AFL, for example, with both feet. Yep. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I Stephen, Stephen Tingo was the best I saw, mm. but Stinger, I, I, I was there when Stinger actually decided to kick on the left, and yeah. he, he just said for one preseason, he didn't use his right hand, and I mean, when he was cutting his meat, mm. when he was picking up a salt and pepper shaker, when he was going to the toilet, everything he did was left-handed for a whole preseason. So he actually trained there himself to be yeah. left-handed. Yeah, that Ooh. makes sense. Yeah, well. So That's and then, good. and because well, kicking you... kicking on the left, it's two. Th- it, it, it's all about dropping the ball. So if you can guide the ball down right, if you can if you can get that technique right, your hand eye coordination is fine with the kick. It's actually guiding the ball down. You watch everyone drop. They drop it from up high, or they they're out mm. too wide. Stinger actually taught himself. That preseason, yeah. with his dad. So when they did marking drills, marked left-handed yeah. only for the whole preseason. I reckon they're selfish anyway, lefties. Really? Yeah, they, they annoy me. Well, they, yeah, I, I, they're I, always I, worrying about. Oh, you can't write left-handed. Well, rubbish. Well, People you can't been because you smudge your whole life. No, but you smudge over your work. I need, I need left-handed scissors. <laughs> oh my God. What left-handed come, scissors? Come on. What, what if you're a school teacher on a, on a blackboard with chalk? That yeah. would be very hard. Left-handed. Very hard, mate. They, well, when you're complaining about left-handed scissors, right? There is no technique in cutting a piece of paper. Right? No. You just squeeze the scissors yeah, in your right not, not hand. That hard. Stop crying. Just selfish. Do you reckon they're me, me, me type. Do you reckon they're smarter or do you reckon they're No, more, they're not smart. They're more needy? Yeah, they're very needy. No, I'll, exactly I'll mention, that, I'll mention that to my son Coops. <laughs> oh, so I reckon uh, Marco, I, I reckon Ox is delaying here. Yeah, he is. Because he knows the feedback 
and the pole. Well, when you people st- want to see my clinic. When like, you stick a hose up your own backside six days in a row. Hang on, I didn't stick it up my own backside. I had Yanti who stuck it up my backside. When Yanti sticks a hose in your own bum. And it's only a little hose too. No, I saw the picture. The hose is the size of my little finger. Mate, they don't sell a hose that small in Bunnings. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> you All right. In the big so hose what was the section. poll, third man? Well, the poll was uh, we so we had the photo that you sent of getting a you getting a colonic, and you said, "Yeah, whack it up on the socials." Yep. And we thought, no, nah, we're not doing nah. that. We're not doing that unless it's poor taste. Unless the family want to see it. Well, they the family yes. want to see it for sure. <laughs> well, the poll came in, and <laughs> the poll, and you know this, Ox, because yeah. we, we had this conversation previously. Our the family poll is came unusual. In, uh, yeah, Let's yeah. face the facts. The poll came in exactly 50 50. Are you kidding? Exact, how many votes? Exactly 50 50. No, no, no. We, we, no. we had, I forget how many votes, but it was a lot of votes. 50 50. You're on kidding. The knocker. On the button. So I blame the family. Of course, then, given it was 50 50, Ox had to make the call. Well, that makes sense. And so I called it's him up. and I said, it's you're, you're, proud, it's you're, so, you're so proud of this hobby, aren't you? You love it. Well, so, I've been getting smashed on the polls. Like, yeah. like I, I thought I knew our listeners. Hey, I'm curious. Is it VAS involved or what happens there? Lots of it. No, not VAS. Lube. What is it? Lube. KY. Jeez. Oh, it's one, like a jelly. One tube per day? Or no. <laughs> well, I'll tell you now, when you go and wipe your bottom afterwards, <laughs> there's a lot of jelly down there. A <laughs> lot of gel. Yeah. Wow. How are you feeling, by the way? Good. Yeah, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Healthy. That, that, hasn't happened, that hasn't happened since I got back. <laughs> yeah. That, that is a no go zone. <laughs> you haven't woken up and you're ex- on. Ex- I tell you what, I wouldn't <laughs> mind this morning. <laughs> it's excellent. <it's laughs> I've actually convinced one of my mates he's going there in, in November. <laughs> he's going over there in November to have a uh, clean up. Oh, well, you can both have a party together when you get back. <laughs> <laughs> Man, do you want to hear what some of the, the, uh, the listeners thought? Yes, I do. <laughs> All right. Anthony's written in. Did he get the other end whitened as well whilst he was there? No, I didn't get anal bleaching. No. no. Photos, is please. That, hang on, hang on. Is that a real thing, anal bleaching? Absolutely. Or not? Well, apparently, I don't know categorically. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to answer that too quickly. Then, okay. No, I don't. I, well, I, I, I've heard the term before, no, but well, I always just thought. But nah, porn it's stars just used to do it. Porn stars used to do it. You know a lot about porn stars. Well, <laughs> all right. Well, let's move on from there. But Anthony, Anthony was talking about your teeth photo that we put up as well. Of yes. course, had them done. Yeah, yeah, you did look no, good. They still look good. Yeah, they look great. Just the right amount of white. Thank you. Parker okay. has said, "Uh oh." The reflection on the dial isn't great. Ooh. Really? Now I didn't look at the photo that closely, but when he wrote that, I went and looked at the photo, and it, it, it's not good. Really? In the reflection, you can see something. I just don't know what it is. <laughs> well, when I took the photo, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> Call the photo. <laughs> what was Call it? Oh, no. There's something there. I'm I, gonna I, see. Where is it? Send me the photo. I've gotta see the what? reflection. It's on. While the... you're looking up, while you're looking it up. I've got another golf story, a team event where something happened in the reflection that I will tell another time. I will tell that story. Right, well, if you've got I ref- won't say who it was. If you've got reflection, <laughs> if you've got reflection, <laughs> if, you, I won't if say you've got reflection stories, let us know because. <laughs> but I, I've got a beauty. Oh, really? I've got something you just won't believe. <laughs> you, before I show you, you Ox, have a look at that photo. That's the reflection there, Marco. I don't know what it is, but it doesn't look good. <laughs> the reflection. Oh my God! That's some kind of instrument. <laughs> Give me a look. What? Is, what is that? Is that the loosener up? Uh, uh, <laughs> what? Make what that, does that thing make do? Make that picture bigger and have a look at that. Is that the loosener? What is this? <laughs> I think it's a. I think it's a reflection of your ass. It is not. What is that? <laughs> that's what I think it is. Parker, no. or something here. Oh, no, no, that's not a... Ref- yeah, I know what that is. What is it? Is it the loosener up, right? No, that's actually water that goes through there. Oh, oh it's very convenient. Not the KY machine oh. or something, is it? No. <laughs> Thank Jeez. God. Stuart has said, Goodness I chose the me. wrong day to log in on a tablet to see things better. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, you did, Stuart. I like, uh, I like Paul Edwards' comment. Very simple, very clear. Oh, dear. Yeah, oh, dear. Perfect. That's nice. Jamie. Nice. Just in time for breakfast. <laughs> God. And we just had the uh, voicemail sound go, so uh, we, we have a voicemail. We might have listened to it. Yeah, let's have a listen. listen. You have one new voicemail. New message. Yeah, g'day, boys. It's Dave from Townsville here. And uh, my call is regarding the civil selfishness and can we still be friends with a bloke who, one, has a colonic irrigation <laughs> and, two, posts it. That's ridiculous. <laughs> The 
That's fair enough. Can we still be friends, Marco? Yeah, we can. But oh, hang on, there's two parts to the question, yeah, though. Yeah, we we can. But if I was asked this question the first time we went to Bali, I think my answer would have been different. But after I've seen what it's done for you, not once but twice, cleans me up. I've got to say that it. He passes both tests. And, and you're just showing the people who are a bit curious mm. about what going on. But what it's done for you, not once but twice, mate, I mean, honestly, it's great. You You've do done look really well. You do look great. But You've they well. did have two questions, Marco. The first was, can you be friends with somebody who has a colonic? And I think the answer is yes, you yes, can. Yes, yeah, you can. can. And the second was, can you be friends with somebody who then posts <laughs> a photo? <laughs> well, different question. No, we ran the poll, so we did the right thing. I just didn't post a willy-nilly. I, I think as long as you've got a podcast. <laughs> <Willy -nilly. laughs> as, long you got, as long as you've got a podcast and you've spoken about of the podcast is all right to post it, but if you're just you know, I oh, know if you're just if you if you work in a milk bar and you're just posting colonic pictures, no, 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 no. willy nilly, I think you got a few issues. It goes to show though, doesn't it? The fifty percent of the population are curious, and fifty percent uh, yeah, don't make me sick. Uh, <laughs> uh, conservative might be a bit of a twinkle coming your way here. Patricia, Ooh. Patricia has Ooh. said, "Looking great, ox." Oh, thanks, yeah. Trish. Yeah. Big Maxie has said, I'm trying not to picture Ox in a red and blue G-string. I may need to lie down. <laughs> no G-strings there. <laughs> have you ever, have you ever worn one of those? It's G-string. Yeah. God, I <laughs> No, I don't think so. No. no. I, I, you, know, um, you know, I took the coloured Speedos. Yes. Oh, yeah, the ones that you said you'd give us a photo of and never well, did. Well, I couldn't. God. They were too small. Good. They were and a G-string. Thank Oh, were Hang they on. too small? Too small at the, like, which side? Uh, <laughs> mainly at the front. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> At the back, my bum wouldn't fit into them. They weren't good, so I had to take them back, and I got a boring navy blue pair. They were the only size oh. in that right. colour. Sorry. Matthew Sutton from Melbourne has said, uh, hey, hey, Ox, how many bintangs while you were there? None. Yeah. Not a one. Mm. I had two cans of Coke the night before. That was my... Full strength? Full strength Coke. Yeah, but The nice. tall, skinny ones. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, they're good ones. A couple of last bits of feedback here. Now, a couple for you, Marco. Yeah. Uh, remember the photo we put up of you at primary school? Where you were the, the gumbers. gumbers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's how people remembered me. Oh, <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. Oh, I loved it. Good on you, Mum. There were so many comments. Uh, we're not going to read them all. We'll, uh, this one was very funny, though. This is from Mark Coldhart. Mark said, forget about the gumboots, Marco. What the hell's going on with the brown skivvy? Hey, yeah. mate, it was cold in Box Hill back in those days. You used to wear skivvies? No. <laughs> <laughs> I actually used to love skivvies. I didn't mind. I had a tailor-made skivvy. When yeah. I, oh, it was the greatest skivvy. Yeah. I'd hung on. It had bloody... Yeah, I remember. Had, oh, I used to always wear it yeah. in the radio. If yeah. it was tightless, it would have lasted much longer. Oh, of course yeah. it was. Skivvies, wow. That's a, that's the blast from the past. <laughs> I think they're, they're making a comeback. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tell yeah. next have, but not a skivvy. Dean Bowman has said uh, he watched the video of you getting punched by Chuck Liddell. Oh, how oh, the hell did that not break his arm? Oh, no, it, it nearly did. Yeah, poor old Chuck, I was feeling sorry for him. You sure, oh. he, he hurt his hand. Oh, please. <laughs> Do you remember how long that bruise was on your arm? Uh, it was about, it, felt, it seemed like six months. Uh, he, he had this, this welt on his arm it at affected, least two or three weeks. It affected my golf for a long time. <laughs> yeah. But it was, it was the fake, it was the fake I, 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 I didn't get faked out. No, you didn't get faked out, but he went bang. But then he went bang. And and he didn't hold back. No, nah, mongrel. He should have knocked him out. <laughs> should take. Him. Final bit of feedback, guys. We we had we the, the KT twenty six picture we put up has gone bunta. Yeah, yeah, insane, yeah. insane. Everyone had a pee. Now I, we're not going to read all the feedback. There's like literally there's about five hundred comments. It's crazy. But this one I thought was interesting because uh, it's just patently untrue. What is it? Now this one uh, is from Tim. And Tim has said, KC26, uh, KC26 is a good, well-priced shoes, but the standout was the Dunlop Volleys with the green and gold Scarborough trim. They went well with the Levi Californians and the Penguin shirt as the Scarborough in Perth, Scarborough yeah. Senior High School uniform. I should have mentioned that all the rich kids had Adidas Roams. There you go. Now, well, that, really? That, the, the volley with the green and the jeans, that's Urban Cool 101. No KC26. Right there. You know what they should do? And I'm not. I'm not telling KT or Dunlop how to mm, go about the business. business. Yeah. They should bring out the next model, KT 27s, and they would go. S that's my new business <laughs> idea, KT 27s. I wonder what the 26 meant. Yeah. Mm. Why 26 and why KT? Well, if you know, get in touch with our socials. We'd like to find out why K. What's the significance of K 26? KT 26. It's not like a mountain, is it? You know how you got K something. Could, right? could twenty six be the size in Malaysia? Japanese or in European <laughs> sizing? Could the person who invented them be someone called Katie, and Katie was her nickname? 
Could be. And yeah. she was 26. There you go. Well, there you go. That's true. Maybe we've just solved it. You are a sleuth. But my business idea, KT27s, and they go off. <laughs> the, ne- the next model up, put a window in them, like an air window. <laughs> it's a great business idea. <laughs> you're, right. you're an ideas man. Thank you. Uh, is it time for the joke? Are we All trying right. to spin the wheel? Spin the wheel. All right, what's it landed on? It has landed on a left-handed joke. Oh, <laughs> what? Just, wow. Who put that on hell? the wheel? How many categories have we got now? Oh, it's like about 80. We've got three wheels. <laughs> we we got to <laughs> spin them all at once. <laughs> right, eight, come on. What have you got for me? Hang on, I've got to come up with one. Yeah. Okay. You making it up yourself or you're Googling away over I'm there? Googling. What are you doing? I think he might be Googling there, unless he's maybe registering KT27 as a trademark. Right, so if, 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 if the joke's anything like the people, it'll be pretty weird. I've got one. I've got one. I've got, right. got one. Sorry, I've got one. Go on. Okay, you got one? I've <clears throat> got one. All, all right, right. Come on. Um, talking about teeth as well. Teeth? Just before. Left-handed teeth. Why should you never brush your teeth with your left hand? I don't know. Because a p- toothbrush works better. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. That's not bad at all. That's all right. That's okay. Very good. Right, I'll see you next week. Don't ask me all the time. All right, bye. Another great show. Thanks for listening. And if you can, we'd love you to subscribe, rate and review the podcast on whatever platform you happen to listen on. That'd be really handy. And maybe share it with a friend as well. And just like Dave from Townsville did, you can leave us a voicemail anytime at coupleoflokescoupleofbeers.com and we'll play it on the show. Thanks to our mates at ENS Trading. We love being with them and we love their new clearance centre in Melbourne on Dandenong Road, Clayton, right opposite IKEA. If you haven't checked it out, it's well worth having a look. Couple of blokes, couple of beers. Executive producer is Dan Bradley at Kaizen Media. And sound design, Daryl Misson at loudzebra.com. 